All right, so before I set up <coughs> the rest of my usual drum set, I've taken the trash can drums down, and uh, they'll be taken apart, and all the components will go back into whatever containers or boxes they're in. And I will put the bottoms back on, and they will get used as uh, trash cans. But before I do that, I want to get into a subject, something that came up, some comments. Uh, one was that the trash can drum sounded tubby and didn't have much sustain. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about depth as it applies to tone. And let's talk about sustain in a very practical way. Let's do that. All right, so here's what I've got. I've got the 14, 12, <laughs> with a 12 and a half inch deep shell, quote unquote. And I've got uh, 18, 16 on the bottom, um, 23 inch deep shell. And on the floor tom, there's some aluminum legs uh, shaped like typical floor tom legs. And then I've got my 14 and my 18 um, from my leather set for comparison's sake, right? All right, so let's do this. Let's talk about sustain in relation to and depth, as well as volume will come into this as well. So here's the 14. Now, I don't know if you can hear it, I can hear that these two drums, this a little bit, these two drums were definitely excited by the sound waves on this head. I can hear it. But anyway. So you get about three seconds of sustain, right? By the way, watch this. I mentioned this. This is the 12-inch the, uh, side. Isn't that weird? It's the same pitch. Can't be the same pitch. Their tension is the same. How can it be the same pitch? And honestly, to me, that this is a good sounding drum. Does it sound tubby? Yeah. Why? Because it's 12 and a half inches deep. And the sound waves are slow as they move. And that creates a throatier tubbier kind of sound. Also remember, these are not actual lugs. This is the simplest thing I could do. They're wood blocks screwed in through the inside of the shell. There's a hole drilled in, tension rod passes through, star nut catches the threads, tightens it up. If I take this lug out, if I take the tension rod out, I can take that lug and kind of bend it. I mean, you're talking one millimeter metal here. It's, it's just paper thin. So I can, you know, so I can only tension the heads just so much. And I, I wondered if the bass drum was going <laughs> to remain intact at all. All right, so, so the lugs are there just to be able to put some tension on the heads. But still, I think the drum <laughs> sounds pretty good, and it's got some sustain to it, right? Now, by comparison. This drum is obviously louder. You've got a 14 and a 14 inch head, not a 14 and a 12. But these two heads are much closer together. This is a 7 by 14 shell. Now, I've already mentioned in other videos why I do the half, -com, the half tom concept on all my drums. I just like the feel and I like the tone. But for practical purposes of what we're talking about here, the sustain is not that much. There's about another second and a half sustain here. I would say. All right, so the sustain is, is a little bit more sustained. Why? Because they're both single ply heads, both have single ply heads. Well, these two heads are closer together, so there's more excitement inside the shell. When there's more excitement inside the shell, the sound waves are going back and forth against each other, each head. And that will maintain obvious sustain of the vibration of the heads. When you get into a deeper drum, sound waves are moving 
a little bit more slowly between the two heads, it creates a slightly throatier or you know tubbier sound. Also, I do believe that wood hoops allow a head to be a little more musical, tonal, whatever. Uh, I think metal on metal hoops kind of messes with frequencies. Um, but overall, this is a 10 ply, these are 10 ply Keller shells, maple shells, and then you have these trash can shells, right? Now the difference in sound, obviously there's a difference in sound. But how much? How much? Look, if I was on stage and I had a screen in front of me so people could only hear the drums, they could not see them, would they know that I was playing trash cans? No. If I was in a recording studio and had these mic'd up with all the software available today, would somebody know I was playing trash cans? No. So you can just hear the excitement difference between the two closer heads. And whether or not the wood hoops make a big deal of difference, I think they do, having used both. Uh, I think you get a more pleasing tone out of wood hoops. But that can be subjective, right? We're talking about sustain, and there's not that much more sustain here than here. Let's move to the quote-unquote quote unquote floor toms, right? Same sustain. Again, a little bit more sustain, just like this one, between a comparison. Now, I can, there's a couple of things I noticed right away. Number one, the deeper shell. I'm slowing the sound wave down. I've also got a 16-inch head down here, not another 18-inch like here. And this whole idea of it doesn't matter if I hit the 16 or the 18, 14 or the 12, the sound waves kind of meet in the middle of the cone and sort of find a, a middle range that they want to work at. <laughs> it's kind of strange. Uh, but anyway, um, I noticed right away I can feel the floor. I can feel radiation in the, the sound, the, the vibration radiating out. There's a couple of reasons. One, typical floor tom legs are attached to the floor, and that's absorbing what the drum is throwing off, especially off the, the resonant head. This drum is very close to the floor, rubbed down below it. So I don't, I would not expect this drum, even as a wood drum, a plywood drum, I would not expect a drum of that depth to have a more sustain, uh, I, I expect it to have less sustain because the, the, uh, the tips on the legs are typical floor tom leg tips, a little bigger than the old fashioned kind, but still there's no isolation. You know how they make isolation tips now to try to keep the floor tom leg from actually touching the floor? So you have the, the, you have the drum touching the floor. It's very close to the floor because of the depth I would expect it to have less sustain. I would expect the floor to drain some energy out of it. Uh, that's just physics. Once again, the drums that are close, the heads are closer together are louder. Why is there more volume? Because the heads are closer together and the energy is, is, is there's a greater amount of energy inside these two shells then inside these two drums, comparative head sizes, right? <coughs> but to sustain, you get maybe a second and a half, call it two seconds, it doesn't matter. Same here, off these two drums. Now let's talk this practically speaking, right? If you have, if, how, well, if I, Even if I give this four seconds, how much music just went by in four seconds? Seriously? <laughs> how much drumming of an entire drum set just went by in four seconds? Cymbal, snare, bass drum. It doesn't matter how much sustain your drums have, practically speaking, 
because all you hear is the initial impact of the stick tip, the velocity it's moved with, the player touch on whatever head you're striking. And nobody is going to sit and listen to see how much sustain your drum has. Who, are you going to do that? No. Especially if you're playing rolls and you're going back and forth and you're all cymbals. <laughs> sustain is lost. In a recording studio, I can make that go on forever with software, right? So in a live situation, you can put stuff on it too. Much easier in a, record in a recording studio. So the idea of sustain then, there's a certain amount of liveliness a drum with more sustain has. But look at all the drummers that don't like sustain. Every head has a optimum place of tension. And you know what that is. You, you're tapping the drum and you're going around each lug and, you're, and all of a sudden you hear this Just as you tension, could be just one lug, you get it in the right place, you're tensioning around all of a sudden and that head has just reached its optimum tension for its vibration ability to throw off sound waves nicely. If you go too low, some guys like that sound. They like that tubby, low sound. That's their sound, that's their feel. They like that, that's fine. Jazzers like the heads tighter, play double rolls on and stuff like that, and not to uh, not to uh, uh, you know get in the way of the bass player. Any kind of collision, you know, keep things uh, separate in tone, and so they like tighter heads. That's fine. But when you if you go too loose or too tight, you know what it is to choke a drum. If you go too tight and you tension the head too much, it can't vibrate. It's not happy if you're going for maximum sustain. If you like the tighter tone, then that's, that's a matter of taste, right? That's, that's a matter of taste, that's all. And, and you can't, there's no right or wrong there. It's, it's what you like to hear. It's what you like to feel as you play. For practical intents and purposes though, sustain. In a band setting, sustain, you just don't hear it. I could be, if I were just playing a drum solo, Sustain is only there as far as the liveliness of the drums. Actually, I could hit this, and I hear the cymbals. Sound waves going all over the place, and they, the vibrations affect the cymbal. Like you're, I've got a cymbal standing over there. I can, I can hear that one ringing. So there's a certain amount of, I mean, there's a whole sound field that's going on with a drum set. And you all know this. You sit behind your drums, and I right away, I hear these two cymbals just just from the impact of sound waves coming off my hand I hear these two cymbals so in the sense of what sustain is in all practical intents and purposes no what you hear if you hear a drummer playing drums is that initial the initial pitch of his touch his stick on whatever head and guys that like twin ply heads all the different heads out there that try to simulate calf heads to get it to that more softer, mellow tone, that have things glued to the head surfaces, under the head surfaces, black dots, all the stuff that's out there. There's dozens of different heads that are out there, right? And you don't, and most drummers, that's why I didn't put the bass drum out here, because most drummers are not even thinking about sustain, per se, when it comes to a bass drum. <laughs> I don't particularly like a boxy sounding bass drum. I want some kind of you know, echo chamber thing going on. Uh, you know, not a full, uh, not, you know, I'll have my, I don't, I don't have it within me, but I've got a, I've got a device that uh, you attach to the hoops, the bass drum hoop, and you can tighten up these pads that go against the head, and you can, you know, take away that boom and that sustain. But I don't like a totally dead bass drum, but that's a popular sound. Guys are stuffing blankets and pillows and all kinds of stuff in their bass drums. That's the feel and the sound they like. That's not my feel, not my sound, but that's, sub that's subjective, right? That's a matter of taste. And when it comes to toms, it's the same thing. Some guys don't want full sustain. If you want full sustain, you want clear, single-ply heads. Coated will be a little bit more, just a touch of muting, if you get coated heads. And then from there, when you start getting into all the other heads that are out there, each one is designed 
to take away a little bit of sustain and brightness and mellow out the tone. So the idea of sustain in the real world is not really a big issue. You can't really hear, if you could get a tom to sustain for 10 seconds, so what? Seriously, so what? What does that mean to the overall sound of a drum set? Sustain is also affected by how you mount the drums. Mine are just sitting in these uh, snare drum stands. And these are basic snare drum stands. They're not the ones I often use when I have the whole leather set set up. Obviously, I did that 10-inch uh, leather tom. Okay, I've got leather on the outside of these, real leather. I just think it looks kind of cool, especially with the wood hoops. And uh, it was just something I tried. Did it affect the sound? Not at all. The, the outside of the shell, I don't care if you have a wrap. I don't, it doesn't. The outside of the shell with the lugs on it and everything else, inside the shell, in that first ply, inside there, that's where the action is taking place. Once the sound waves begin to get into the shell itself, they dissipate. They're hitting, they're hitting resistance. So the outside shell, whatever, the outside ply is for cosmetic purposes. It, it doesn't, it's almost got nothing to do with the sound of the drum. Obviously, this leather is, the leather is spray glued on. I could spray glue and wrap it on nice tight. The legs are holding, I mean, the legs are holding it in place. Then the sound is not affected one way or another. They still sound good. <clears throat> so that's not an issue. And it, those that use hype to try to make that an issue, that's marketing. That, it's, I'm sorry to tell you, that's marketing. It's got nothing to do with reality. Prove it. If it's got anything to do with reality, show me a tom with no wrap and show me a tom with a wrap on it and now hit each one, tune them the same, you know, tension them the same, same microphone, same room, same heads, everything. Do it all the same, hit both drums and I want to hear this amazing difference between an unwrapped drum and a drum with an outside plastic wrap on it. Come on. <clears throat> There's enough vintage players out there that love their vintage drums that all are wrapped and they don't, nobody's complaining about the sound because it's not an issue, okay? So anyway, that's a little bit about the idea of sustain in a practical world, right? And how your drums are mounted and uh, how close the heads are to each other. Um, the excitement that you create inside the shell, whatever dents it. These drums would not sound a great deal different if this was a, a five ply or a six ply, had some reinforcement rings on there, versus 10 ply, you're only talking about a quarter of an inch. Come on, you're talking about a quarter of an inch. So if I bring it down from a quarter of an inch to 3 16 to what, 3 30 seconds? <laughs> and you have a reinforcement ring on it to, make, to keep the structural integrity in, you're, you're not, you're, it's impossible to change the sound that much that on stage, it could be noticed. In the recording studio, you can do so much with mics and software now, it's, all of it is moot. I mean, you, I, if you haven't looked it up on YouTube, look it up. Or if it's not Vimeo, somewhere I saw it. Somebody took a set, somebody took cardboard boxes and made them sound like drums, just with software. Just put a mic on them and start messing with software, made them sound like drums. I mean, come on. So this idea of drum shells, hype in the industry, uh, this again, I'm just trying to get that information out there. I don't, I don't have it in the room. Uh, I don't want to make this too long, but I will say this. Maybe, I'll, maybe in the next video, I'm going to bring it out. Hey, I'll do a bass drum comparison. That's a good idea. I think I'll do that. So thanks for watching this one. I want to finish here. Uh, so this is the idea of, of uh, sustain in a real world. And uh, think about these things. Apply them. However you want to apply them with your drum set, choice of heads, choice of mounting, tuning, tensioning heads, and, uh, you know, put together the stuff that you like. And, and don't, don't worry about all the hype about drum shells. I'm telling you, it's, it's ultra hype, and it's, it's really gotten pretty, pretty crazy. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.